Greetings. Good morning. There's a few folks who would like to join and are having issues, so we'll give them a few minutes to join the CI working group and I'll um, try to help them. Hi, Dan Kahn here. Good morning, hey, Dan. Dan. Yeah, I had an out of date um, meeting invite, but I found it on the public one. I did as well. Awesome. Well, we got a good number of folks here. Let's go ahead and get started. Christina, can you drop the um, public agenda and notes link for that chance SCI work group notes for Tini mm -hmm. Earl? Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Could we just spend a second and um, have the other folks introduce themselves? I'm Dan Kahn from the yeah. CMCF, and I see we have Taylor Denver, Lucina, um, and uh, on. But uh, I guess Francois and Rolfo, uh, uh, Fred Simon, could you say who you are? Hello, uh, my name is Francois. I'm working on Infoblox company, but mostly I'm here for Core DNS. And I, I came last last uh, meeting two weeks ago, and we started to talk about how integrating more tests from Core DNS, and I come here to follow up on this. Awesome. Thanks very much. And I'm uh, Fred Simon, Chief Architect of uh, JFrog. Uh, great. Glad to have you, Fred. Rowan Fletcher, I, I co op. Sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry, um, my name is Rohan Fletcher. I'm from II Corp in New Zealand. I'm, I've, I'm working with Chris. Great. Uh, anyone else? Uh, 
for the person dialing in, uh, you probably have to hit star six to unmute. No, it's loud. This is Chris Hansen from RXM. Chris from RXM. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, let Lucina and folks take over now. Okay. Looks like Melvin just joined as well. So um, for folks who haven't met me, I'm Taylor Carpenter. I'm working on the Cross Club CI team. I'm with Walt Co-op and Lucina and also on the Cross Club CI team, project management in Denver. Williams on the cross cut CI team. So the I'm can everyone see my screen right now? I'm sharing. Yes. Okay, great. So this is the agenda notes. If this is on the public calendar for CNCF, you can add uh, your agenda here. Um, or it's the weekly, uh, twice a month meetings. You can add those in here if you'd like to speak about something at the next meeting that's coming up. We're going to give some updates on the CrossPlot CI project. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in this. So we've had a few releases on the CrossPlot CI. Um, we had one on March 7th, uh, March 12th, and we have one in progress, probably releasing by end of this week. And that's related to ONAP and a couple of things. So I'm going to jump right into this. So we've <coughs> been updating to support the newer versions of Kubernetes. Um, most of that went through pretty well. Um, there were some items that we need to verify with the integrations we're doing with ONAP. We've also updated Prometheus, Ferdinand, Linkerd, and gone through and tested all those. Um, there's a few items that we can jump into that we had to change in the system to support. So updating the release sometimes is a quick change, and we'll be looking at automating the new releases as they come out. The items that catch us is when um, something may a requirement upstream breaks and uh, or causes a breaking change in how the actual CI system works. So we'll talk about a couple of those things here in a minute. We're also updating documentation. We've um, have a we've made some changes for the project itself. Docs. And this is at a high level, going over cross cloud CI and um, what it does. And we're also going through and at the per component level, like the cloud provisioning, we're trying to get the documentation updated for each of those, as well as the install and how to for each of these items. So we're going through and updating those. We're actually getting quite a bit of feedback from several of the projects like Prometheus as they're doing some testing there. So we're gonna keep updating those especially as we're moving towards um, ONS, attending, and KubeCon uh, Europe. So one of the big releases that we had was this 110, um, FluentD, that's a new project that we added. Um, FluentD required some changes um, on the testing system itself to support before we release those. And IBM Cloud, so that's a new cloud that we're now supporting for provisioning Kubernetes and testing the various projects on. We released that. We have Linkerd coming up. Um, Linkerd updated for one through six, so that was another bump from the previous one. It came out just as we released one through five, so we that went into QA and we were able to release that. I think before I move on, Maybe, uh, Denver, do you want to speak to some of the things on FluentD, what we had to change in the testing system? I mean, we didn't have to change too much. It was just a little difficult to deal with because FluentD has free repos for their builds. They have one repository for 
building the Fluentd artifact itself, uh, run Fluentd without Docker, but then they split their containerization repos into two separate, and it's nice to adhere to the procedures they're using to build. So that meant we had to figure out a way to, how do we clone these other two repos into the Fluentd repo before we do a build so that we can just use what they're using upstream. So uh, we had to make changes to do that and that was effectively, let's just do a clone from upstream for their latest branch or a match to the version we're building. And that let us get around that one and maintain using whatever build procedure they're using upstream. Could, could you guys maybe explain to me, I, I don't quite understand why there's um, kind of new release notes for each new version of um, the projects. It seems to me like the whole idea of CI is that as a new release comes out, it, it should automatically get deployed. And then, you know, if it if it fails, that's fine. I mean, that's a, a totally normal thing as the, um, you know, command to invoke it or some aspect of it breaks. But I, I, I guess I, the part I'm unclear on is, is, is the default that the CI system automatically does take in new releases or does it need to be manually set every time there's a new release? I can speak to that for a moment in Denver if you want to fill in anything else. So right now it does for the stable releases. We are updating that. That's in the um, uh, CNCF configuration uh, repo that's a cross cloud YAML. And we do set those for stable. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them was some of the projects had multiple stable releases and so selecting that, what were we gonna do for that? Um, we may want to stay with one like Kubernetes for a while. Some of the projects wouldn't work on it. So we needed to stay with a certain release. Most of that seems to be out. The other was the determining the release was problematic uh, when we started. Some of the projects wouldn't tag, they would create branches or they wouldn't have semantic versioning. So there was a lot of items. Some of that has gotten better, it looks like for all of the current CNCF. Um, so I think we could start adding that and turning it on. We support it, the automatic for commits. So once we can determine the stable release, then that should be okay. That doesn't help with multiple stables. So like Kubernetes, if we're saying we want to support those. ONAP looks like they may need multiple stable releases. So there'd be some type of determination there. So it's mainly on that side, more than what can we test? We could run on any. That I think I got it, but I, I just want to point out that it, it, it is, and I'm open to the idea of supporting multiple older versions as well, but supporting new releases as soon as they're done without having to wait a couple of weeks for a new cross-cloud release, it seems very valuable to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that, that's actually in plans. It's kind of been um, waiting for some of these other things to be at a point where we could fo refocus on that and how are we gonna pull them in. I think a lot of the projects are going to create some type of hooks into GitHub and trigger those. Um, if you're running your own project, so you're running Circle CI or something, you may have a release and say, I'm gonna configure this to do it on tags. Being an external project that's testing um, those projects, cross cloud CI testing those, we don't have as much control over how those are triggered. So we have to programmatically figure out what the releases are. Once we do that, take the time to say, how, how do we determine what a release is when a project releases it? We can automate that. So that, that'll be coming up soon. Well, cool. so in progress, um, slide six is ONAP integration and op adding open site deployments, actively working with Chris Hodge on integrating OpenStack. Chris is doing a 
the majority of the work and we're going through and helping with any changes um, that occur in the system and questions and then trying to QA and pull those in, hoping to get that in um, very soon. On the ONAP integration, we are, I'm gonna move down here, slide eight. So the ONAP integration for folks who uh, were not here at the last meeting or haven't heard about this, we're, we're actually integrating with ONAP CI system. So the builds, all the build artifacts we're pulling from ONAP, the status of the builds in the dashboard itself. We're here whenever these run through. It are based on ONAP's CI system. And then when we do, um, after doing the Kubernetes provisioning to all of the supported clouds, then we're taking the artifacts from the ONAP container registry and we deploy those. So in QA and going through testing right now is we have the app deployments with the containers. Uh, we're using EDE tests um, from ONAP upstream and they have a, what they call a, ro it's a robot container and it does quite a bit of work. We're focused on their service orchestrator, so an FSO is what that's called. And the components, there are several um, different containers that get deployed at the same time that we need to do that testing. And it's currently working in our um, dev and CI testing environments. So we're moving that through and it should be released pretty soon. As much as possible, we're trying to use upstream for E to E test for Helm charts and those sort of items. On the ONAP side for the app deployment, we tried to use the Helm charts. They're currently in de heavy development, trying to get ready for ONAP's side. They're trying to containerize all of the all of the different components, and the Helm charts are being reworked. So at the moment. We are using uh, custom Helm charts based on theirs that were heavily patched to actually function. And we'll be trying to create some um, pull requests upstream and get those in as they stabilize over the next few weeks. Denver, is there any specific thing that you wanna add to that or does anyone have any questions? I guess, yeah. As you covered that, they're developing heavily upstream. It was almost impossible to try track their active release of Helm charts because every day something changes entirely different. So we had to make a fork of their release and then make some patches to support 1.9 because they were currently having bugs with that, as well as support or have changed some things about how storage classes were handled and a few other Kubernetes resources because we're trying to get it across five different cloud providers where it was currently making assumptions that you'd be on Azure, which made it difficult. Awesome. This is a pretty significant integration and it's helped us update a lot of items that are going to support um, other projects um, related to the Helm charts, the repos used. So that's affecting, we've made changes that affected like Fluency, supporting those different ones, um, supporting multiple containers and repos. That's also a related item that um, lets us have more complex scenarios. Does anyone have any questions about the ONAP integration and integrating with the external CI? Other items? Okay, cool. So part of the cross-group collaboration with other projects, we've uh, been mentioned OpenStack and Prometheus. Prometheus is trying to build out a CI system covering quite a bit of items, including performance testing. And we're actively working with them to try to build the E2E tests that 
would be usable in crossplot CI and complement what they're building out at a larger scale um, for DNS as well. Francois? Mm, yes. Uh, so for, for core DNS, I updated right before the meeting this issue. Um, yeah. And now we need to schedule a meeting, I guess. That's right. For, for the technical part. But I think you are, you are in New Zealand, no? Yep. Or who? Um, so w what time should we schedule something? <laughs> I am on East Coast. <laughs> You're on East Coast? Okay, that should work pretty well. Um, I will reach out to you after this call. Okay. Shoot you anyway. right. So after we're done with the ONAP and OpenStack, we're looking at Oracle for deployments uh, potentially, unless um, there's another cloud that looks like we should focus on. As CNI is the next project that we're targeting. As mentioned before, Earlier, we're updating all the documentation, but the README and the installs, and trying to get those different pieces working. The EDE test for adding those, I think, is going to be one of the big ones, uh, and we'll be doing that based on information. So we work with Francois and Cordines and the Prometheus project, how you can add the upstream EDE tests and make them usable for other projects and to run out of your own system. And then making a few other changes on the um, the dashboard itself. We're going to be going to ONS um, end of this month, planning on going to KubeCon Europe. The next CI working group uh, we were planning to cancel unless um, someone else is going to be on that, as we will be in LA for ONS. And there was a face-to-face -face workshop uh, the weekend before the ONS conference. I'm happy to see anyone there, as well as in the conference, we'll be running a, a booth and can answer more questions about CrossCloud CI. Okay, I think that's it for CrossCloud CI team. So I have one question. On, on the slide 10, you say replace bare metal by bare metal. What does it mean? Because you're already on packets, no? It's, oh, it's not packet right now. Yes, well, it is on packet. So um, all right. are you referring to the bare metal where it says bare metal or? Well, on, on your slide, Ted, you say you will change your bare metal, but r right now for CodeDNS, we run our CI on packet. That, that's why I was focusing on this one. But okay. Say, yes, on, look at yeah. last, but uh, change bare metal to bare metal packet. Yeah. That's just the labeling, so. Oh, okay, sorry, this okay. Should be saying, yes, it should be saying bare metal and packet here. There's missing quotes around it. Change thing. quote bare metal unquote to quote bare metal packet unquote. It, it's that we want to give packet credit for the fact that they're giving us these fantastic free resources. That's right. Okay, okay, okay just my. I'll add those quotes. That'll make it more clear, Dan. Thanks. We have been asked about adding ARM support. Again, and that'll be something that we need to revisit and look at when we should focus on that versus, um, say, Oracle and any of the other clouds. Awesome. Any other questions, or does anyone have anything to talk about here? Yeah, Tyler, I was just wondering if there were plans to uh, open source the dashboard itself. Yes, it is um, open source and 
there's some renaming of the project, um, just some very like high level items that need to be taken care of. Um, I would like to have all that done before ONS. It's, it is open source. It just needs to be um, those things adjusted, update, make sure everything's still running once we make those sort of changes, and then um, enable that. Taylor, I, I have another question for you about releases, and, and you, you don't need yeah. to address it now. We, we can follow up later, but just looking at Prometheus, um, they seem to be doing a great job in the releases um, page on GitHub of labeling all of their releases. So, I mean, looking through here, I see 2.2.0-RC0-RC1 and then 2.2.0 when they release that. And it's my belief that, that most CNCF projects, if not all of them, are using that release pages of, of the um, um, on GitHub. And so I, I, I do believe re releases are, are fundamentally automatable, and, and I would really like to move to that as a feature. So um, that we would be, and, and I'm, I could see the argument on why we might want to skip RCs um, or, or ignore RCs, but but particularly trying to move head as soon as it ships seems seems very worthwhile. Not head, trying to trying to to move stable as soon as a new release ships seems very worthwhile. And, and you know, if it fails, then the CI is sending a useful signal. Absolutely. So when I guess up until maybe three or four months ago, um it seemed most of the, well, not most of them, there were several projects that didn't have releases in this release link, if uh, if you go to that tab. And some of them, if they didn't have that, they may have a release tag. So, and it may not be using semantic versioning. So it was more of determination of what are we going to do for this project? If they don't have, if it doesn't have two dot, 2.2.0 and it just had 2.2.0 or 2-2. There was a few of them like that. And some of them didn't have anything on the actual release page. They just tagged. So it's more of determining how are we going to know when it's a release. Like as a human, we can quickly see. There's a pro programmatic part for that. It seems to be better, as you're seeing now. It seems that most, most of the CNCF projects are now following those standards. And that's changed from what it was many months back. So I think we can add it now. And okay. so, and, and I mean, we can also engage with the, the projects. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to mandate to any project, oh, you must use the GitHub release pages. But if we just mention why we're using it and how it's helpful, then I suspect a lot of them will be open to it. As long as we have something consistent that we can find, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, otherwise, we need to think there's some fallback that we do. Potentially, just it uses the last version and and notifies us. I d I don't know whatever that would be. Right now, it looks like at least the projects that we're currently supporting, we could add something and and feel pretty confident that as they do release, and we we should be good to go. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Well, thanks everyone. Again, we are not going to have a meeting at, on the 27th. Um, so the next meeting will be in April. Hope to see some of y'all at LNS and maybe the face to face CI working group, CI CD face to face working. Yep. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks. Thank you.
Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks.